specific location on the globe? Those are the answers to, these, to this question, right? Possible answers. Um, whereas 6B, uh, in which continent is Ecuador, asks for big regions on the globe, like South America, North America, whatever, Europe, and so on. But you can see that every possible answer to 6A entails an answer to 6B, right? Although, I mean, now, now disregarding the fact that the oceans also have, I mean, spots on the ocean also have coordinates, but they are not on continents. So we have to allow for that. You can see that um, um, in this sense, 6A entails 6B because you cannot answer 6A without also answering 6B. So that's what the notion of, he called it containment, but some, Lots of people call it entailment between questions, is usually um, taken to be. Okay, now the join, what's called a join of two questions here, that is something like the conjunction of two questions. Did John read the paper? Did Mary read the paper? That's what, what I uh, had on the previous handout with the question about father and mother, uh, question about the parents. So 7C, did John read the paper and did Mary read the paper, intuitively requires an answer which answers both 7A and 7B. And that is taken to be the hallmark of conjunction when it comes to questions. So the conjunction of two questions is something like 7C and it semantically the effect of conjoining these two things is that um, you get a new question which entails the other two, the, the two that you started out with. In terms of partitions, that is simply overlaying the, them on top of each other. If you have, so P and not P, and you have Q and not Q, and uh, now we don't have a notation for questions, but we can think of something like whether P so this is the question whether P, let's call it this. This is, this is the denotation of the question whether Q. And then if we have something like whether P and whether Q as the intersection of these two things. And you can see that if you, so if someone tells you which of these four areas you're in, then you thereby also learn which of these two halves you're in and which of these two halves you're in. That's, that's what this comes down to. So it's a refinement of the partition. So this, that also comes from Hamblin, as in a Hamblin paper as well. Uh, now, uh, Hamblin 73, let's skip that. There is a, an interesting paper that is on this handout, page four through five. Um, this is an early attempt to address questions in Montague semantics. But we should skip it, first of all, because it uses a very idiosyncratic notation and grammar and so on. And um, secondly, because it was soon superseded by Carton in 77, which uh, became a very influential and, uh, yeah, well, a much more thorough approach. So then it starts on page six. Are there any questions about Hamblin that we should address before we move on to this uh, part of the paper? Um, yeah. Maybe I don't uh, exactly understand what the intersect is. Uh, what I have in mind is the question like, um, how, how high can human being jump? Or how fast can human being run? So in this case, what is exhaustive and what is semantic? Uh, that's a good point. Uh, oh, so I suppose. Now, um, we have to. Okay, how high can human beings jump? All right, suppose there actually is a height. I don't know if there's a maximum height. But let's say it's two and a half meters, something. I don't know. Okay, okay suppose that is objectively 
the highest possible thing, uh, height that a human can jump. Right. Okay. Now it's also true then that humans can jump two meters. Right? That's actually entailed by this. Right. And so if you ask me how high can people jump, how high can humans jump, and I tell you two meters, I'm not speaking falsely. It's actually true that people can jump two meters. Right? I have something said something true. Um, but you will be misled by what I said. Right. Because you assume that what I meant was they can jump two meters and no higher. I, I, you assume that I gave you the extreme value, whatever that is, right? Uh, you assume that I gave you an exhaustive answer. That is, that I told you of all the heights that people can jump, that they can jump those heights, which is all the heights up to two meters. Because what I say actually also entails that they can jump 50 centimeters and one meter and, and all that. I, I, I included all that in my answer. So I gave you all the positive values and you conclude that there are no other positive values, that everything else is are negative. That is, all the heights above two meters are impossible for people to reach. Um, now you assume that I gave you an exhaustive answer. That's precisely what that means. That um, I told you of the positive cases that they are positive and of the negative cases that they are negative. But I didn't do that. An exhaustive answer has that property. It tells you of all... Now, it, we are not talking here about individuals, but about degrees or something, right? right. An exhaustive answer te tells you of all degrees whether they are uh, jumpable or not. That's, that's what an exhaustive answer does. I didn't actually, literally, I did not give you an exhaustive answer because I didn't say no higher than two meters. Okay, so my answer was non-exhaustive. You assumed that it was exhaustive. That is uh, usually modeled by applying a kind of pragmatic operator that exhaustifies the answer in the sense that you strengthen my assertion from two meters to two meters and no more. Something similar, I mean, it's a little easier with, with people, with individuals. So who came to the party? If I tell you John and Mary, came, then uh, if the answer is exhaustive, then I actually told you more than just that those two people came, but also that Bill didn't. The exhaustive answer specifies for each individual whether it came or not. So but, but that's possible because, you know, kind of logical, uh, the, uh, the name, a logical space uh -huh. is kind of a finite. But my question is what happens if, you know, Oh well, we still have a, a partition. Doesn't need to have finitely many cells. That's not that's not required of a partition. It can be infinite. There's no problem with that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's then we we cannot draw it anymore. It's I mean, you know, you, you run into somehow problems with measurement and that sort of thing. Whether, you know, whatever. It's, uh, th but they they are mathematic problems that we don't need to worry about. So. Yeah, the finite, fi the finiteness is not crucial to all of this. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Okay. So we have five minutes before the break. And perhaps I should just... Uh, get started on the background. Now this is hard, this paper is hard to read and it's also hard to talk about because it's it's fully implemented within Montague's PTQ framework, uh, the categorical grammar with the ups and downs and the semantics and all the hard parts and um, so I would like to make it a little easier by skipping over lots of things in here and focusing on what's crucial. So for example, here on page six, 
we start with a table that has syntactic categories and all that, and uh, perhaps we should not even worry about that too much. Uh, what matters here is uh, in cases like 10 and yeah, the two trees in 10, those two derivations, they show that from this grammar making certain assumptions about how things come together, uh, you can build a sentence like every man loves a woman in at least two ways. Okay, so what happens here is that you put woman together with the article to get a woman from the bottom up. You put that together with love to get loves a woman, or love a woman actually, that's what I'm speaking. And likewise for man, turn it into every man, every man loves a woman, and so on. So that should be pretty familiar to people. And you can, uh, you can get the other scope for every man loves a woman by quantifying in, that is, this operation that you see on page, on the next page, the, the top of page seven. Now we need, we need um, this quantifying in business to talk about questions because WH words behave like quantifiers and they take scope and all that. So for words like who and that sort of thing. Uh, we need to have a, a mechanism for deriving wide scope for an, an object, which is what we, sh what we see at the top, uh, top of page 7. Now uh, here you see, um, I don't really want to write on the board uh, because we are almost in the break. You see that every, mon every man loves him is part of this tree, right? At some point we have a string here, every man loves him zero. Now the him zero should not be confused with a grammatical pronoun. I mean, it doesn't work bec already because it, uh, it's supposed to be standing for a woman, but it's, it looks masculine. Uh, none of that is uh, important. This him zero is simply a variable. It's a syntactic variable. It's like a trace. If you're familiar with Chomsky and with generative grammar, it's like a trace, although movement is not the motivating intuition underlying this. Now you have this every man loves him zero, um, which is not the full sentence yet, because it has this, this variable in there. And it's derived in, in exactly the same way as the sentence on the previous page, every man loves a woman. So this him zero can play the same role semantic, syntactically as a woman. Okay. But then the trick is here that you can later on stick a quantifier into this place and get the sentence, every man loves a woman. Now syntactically you get this exact same string twice, but uh, even though the strings are the same, the trees, the, the way you got there are different. These derivations are different. And uh, that gives you different semantic values for these sentences. You get the two different scopes for the two quantifiers, every man and a woman, that way. Okay, that's the first thing I wanted to almost skip over. Now I said what was needed without going through the technicalities. I also want to say what we need for the semantics without going through too many technicalities. And um, So I will not say much about types, for instance, about semantic types and uh, this function application that brings things together. And doing so, going through this in detail would take several hours probably. It's not, it's not possible to do it in, this, in the space of this, um, this one day tutorial. Um, so we have to jump to the bottom of page eight, interpretation of questions. Although, before we get there, perhaps we can go through the sentence, every man loves a woman and see how that is derived. Just to have a non-question first. If there's interest in looking at how that derivation is interpreted on the semantic side, I'm not sure. What do you say? Is, what, is, there, is there a need for that? Or? 
Should we do this example, every man loves a woman, semantic derivation for that? It's not actually, it's not given on the handout, so that's why I, perhaps it would be a good idea. Before or after the break, what do you think? I'm, I can go on. I don't need a long break. Okay? Okay. Let me, or do you want a, do you want a break? No, we don't need a break. <laughs> yes? Uh, so, okay, well, yeah. Uh, the next session starts at 120. This is, we don't, do, do we need that long a break? <laughs> yes, we don't need it because we haven't had a box lunch. Yes, so when does it, when does it, so when the lunch arrives, we'll have a break. When is I think they have already arrived. Oh. Why don't you do it? I'll, 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 I, I, I want to do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, namely, I will do the tree at the top of page 7. It's a very simple derivative. So if you have, I mean, I, I think Montague grammar isn't always taught at, at the here, right? So some students may not have seen how this works, right? Well, uh, but this, you may have you may have seen other sort of related approaches, like this part, Heim and Kratzer book, for example. That's you yeah. know. So you know what the lambda is, I think. Yeah. Okay. So let me briefly say what we have here. Now, this, the problem is that everything is intentional. So that's actually if, if you haven't. If you are completely, so for those who are unfamiliar with this, there is some magic going on here, um, which is a little confusing. But anyway, so in principle, this thing behaves like a noun phrase, sem sem semantic syntactically, and is also of the same type as a noun phrase. Okay, semantically, that is, it's of the same type as a generalized quantifier. Um, you would normally say that it's this sort of thing, lambda uh, p, p of x0, something like that. This is not right, uh, but uh, extensionally speaking, it's a set of properties that x0 has. x0 is an individual variable set of properties that it has. And the problem is that we have this sort of thing um, this operator here, um, because the property is not just a set of individuals, it's a function from worlds to sets of individuals. It's the intention of a property. And this downward hook gives us the extension of the property. So it's a set of properties that x0 has. Okay. Um, and I have that somewhere. Um, so there are these types on page eight, but um, let's not uh, get sidetracked by that. So law of the, tra the transitive verb law of I won't uh, write the, the, sort of the type as a long expression. This is just translated into something like law of prime. All we need to know about that is that this is this wants noun phrases as its argument. It wants things like these, okay? Um, as its arguments, it's of a type which takes this as the argument. So the string that we end up with with love. Now this is uh, him zero, but remember this is not a pronoun. It's just a variable. It's an abstract thing like a trace. And on the semantic side also, we just say love prime. Uh, now, not directly this, but, but we combine with the intention of this, lambda p, p of x0. If you want to know why we want the intention of this, that's a long story. With love, it's not clear that we do, but we have words like seek, uh, which are intentional on their object. John seeks a unicorn. It's possible even if there are no unicorns. That's why um, transitive verbs generally should be able to combine with 
intentions. Um, and then we have every man on the other side. And I skip this this one step here. Um, which looks like this lambda q. So this is of the same type as p zero. It's also a generalized quantifier. Lambda q for all x if x is a man, then it has property q. By the way, it's easy to make a mistake on the board. Please let me know if I'm making a mistake. Okay. That's the notation of that. So the set of properties such that every man has them. Bringing this, these two together, um, well, okay, every man loves him zero. Um, we have this lambda q for all x, man of x, and q of x. That's what we copied from here. That is now applied to this. Uh, sorry, uh, 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 let me, let me, not so fast. Actually, we have this. We have this free variable in here. This um, this x zero. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, we are not. No, it's no problem. I'm sorry. Um, it applies to this. Uh, this very string here that I have, lambda p, p x zero. Okay. We can do some lambda conversions here. We end up with for all x. If x is a man, then now I want to skip a couple of, well. These I can put here. Um, law of oh now we have x zero here. Um uh, p, p of x zero x. Okay, um, now it, I can't go through every detail here, we can dismiss these two things for a reason that is uh, a technic technical reason. And usually these would be written differently and I'll just write them differently now. Uh, so let me, let me strike this out and say love x this. because we have the subject here and the object there and we might as well write it this way. Okay, so this expression is what we have for the, uh, for the sentence, for the string, the formula, not the sentence or whatever we call it, every man loves him zero. And then we put in a woman, um, which looks a lot like what we had down here. Lambda Q, there is an X, such that X is a woman. And it has property Q. Okay, now how do we put these two together? Now here we have to perform one little trick of magic. I'll, I'll continue over here. Every man, the string we get is every man loves a woman. Loves a woman. Uh, what we apply here, the functions we apply is, so first of all we have the denotation of a woman. There is a, uh, wait, I shouldn't say x, I have to use a different variable, sorry, uh, y. Okay, sorry, otherwise it will clash. Because we have used x over there already. There is a y, and it has property q. That's the denotation of the noun phrase. We combine this with the following, the intention of, now, not exactly what we have here, but lambda x zero, and then what we have here. Um, 
if you know the Hyman Crosso textbook, you know that they have, so they have sort of labeled and an, an, an indexed traces or empty things floating around, right? And then next to a quantifier like this, they have a number in the tree which does precisely this sort of thing, the derivation, you get a lambda variable out of that. So it's basically doing the same thing with less syntax, but no less magic or uh, sort of um, um, intervention of the linguist. So man of x, and then we have uh, that whole thing here, law uh, x, x. Okay. Um, now again, we can do some um, simplification. Actually, here we have to go through a real uh, step of magic, which um, sorry, which which uh, I won't explain in detail. But I'll show a couple of steps here how we get to where we want to go. So we put this in for the Q lambda x, lambda x here for all x, man of x, law of x, lambda p, p x zero. That's what, so this this stretch here, this went in for the Q, now we have the Y that comes from here. And I don't know. Uh, losing losing I'm losing track of the brackets, but okay, this goes away for the same reason that this went away. Never mind. Um, now we have this function here which can apply to the y as its argument and so we have if man, uh, man is a, sorry, woman, woman um, and for all x if x is a man then law of x and we have e Y, um, which means something like x loves x loves all the properties that y has. X loves everything y is, and uh, through a this this uh, step which I announced as an additional piece of magic, we can conclude if if there is an individual such that x loves all the properties of that individual then x actually loves that individual it's a meaning postulate woman y such that all x if x is a man then law of star this is a different relation which means pretty much the same thing x y okay this is what we end up with if this went too fast I mean if, if you're not familiar with Montague grammar then um, much of this is a little obscure perhaps but what um, what's important is really what we need as I think most of all is this step of quantifying in where we have this this string here with an with a kind of a, a free variable, this x0, and we put it together with a quantifier like this, and we uh, and we are putting this in front of it, and we end up with exactly what we want: the right scope for the existential. Uh, now that I'm saying all of this because wh words are treated as a kind of quantifier in this paper in the system. That's why we need to know how quantification works here. In fact, they are treated as existential quantifiers, not just something like 
them, but they are existential quantifiers in the system. And so I will give at least one other derivation where we actually have a WH word coming in. And we'll see how this comes together. The crucial step that differs between declarative sentences like these and questions such as who does every man love, the crucial step that differs is that at this point where we have this sort of incomplete string which however is already something like a sentence, we turn that into an interrogative object and it kind of um, call, called a proto-question in this paper. Um, and then we just continue with the derivation as before and we end up with the interpretation for who does every man love. That's what we'll do after the break. And I promise things won't, for the rest of the day, things won't be so technical. Okay, this is, this is just this paper. I, I just want to reassure everyone that we will not keep doing this for the rest of the day. Okay? Please come back. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>